to the giraffe. Now, it's called the greater kudu. And greater kudu are the second largest antelope here in Africa. Now, watering holes like this one on the left, very important gathering places for many of these forest animals, especially larger ones like the black rhino. Now, black rhino, uh, oh wow, look at that. There's actually one right there on the left. Now, unfortunately, hundreds and thousands of these rhino have been poached for their horns. There's a lot more of those big fat pelicans here on the island. Now we are going to get a much better view of this hippo here on the left. There's no logs blocking it. And you can see once again that looks like just a giant rock under the water there, but that is a hippo. Simba one, come in. This is Simba one, over. I just wanted to let you know that my ground patrol has seen a lot of elephant activity near the red plate pit. So looks like we're heading out of the Safi River into a completely different ecosystem. We're going to be seeing lots of different kinds of plants and animals than earlier. For instance, that large baobab tree there on the right. Very common in this area that we're coming into now. We're actually coming up on one of my favorite views in the entire reserve. Absolutely beautiful, folks. You can see just how far out it stretches from this view. It's called the savanna. And it's all part of the Serengeti grassland, which stretches for hundreds of miles across East Africa. You'll see those cute little animals there with the black stripes. Very, very cute little guys. They're called Thompson's gazelles. Giraffes will eat the undergrowth of the trees, allowing sun to shine through, and that does allow that grass to grow nice and tall. Those are termite mountains. They'll get to be hard as rock when they bake in the sun all day. Now these large reddish brown cattle here are called Ancoli cattle. And those horns can get to be almost six feet in length and almost 20 inches in circumference just around the base. Now this animal just here to the left is one of my favorite animals and I'll tell you why. It has a very special natural defense system. You can see its fur looks very oily. That's because it secretes a natural oil from its fur that helps it to go through bodies of water and come out completely dry on the other side. It's called a water buck. Those are white bearded wildebeest also known as the new for the grunting sound they make. Now you'll see on top of this hill as we pass this tree area, there are some antelopes up there. They're called sable antelopes. And they're the official emblem of the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. You'll see them on top of this hill. Heading towards Monkey Point, Wilson, over. Keep your eyes open for me. We picked up a baby elephant that was wandering off on its own. We can't find the mother. I'm afraid torches may be in the reserve. Oh no. Oh, that's horrible. Well, so we'll definitely keep our eyes peeled for anything suspicious and let you know. Just in the back right there, you're gonna see a big beautiful elephant back there. It sounds like we're picking up a local radio frequency or something. It's just kind of nice. We lost that real cool radio frequency. That's all right. So folks, just to the right here, you're gonna see some red clay with some tusk marks. Elephants will commonly occupy themselves by those red clay pit areas. They'll eat that red clay for all the nutrients it provides. Oh, and some more elephants to the left. This actually looks like pr a pretty young elephant too. Those elephants will stay with their mothers for about 14 years after birth. So that elephant's mother is probably very close by actually. 
great elephant sightings there. All right, so it looks like a flock of greater flamingo have flown into this water and cool here. Greater flamingo are the lightest in coloring of all flamingo, and they do get that light pink tint from the food that they find, and that is mostly from shrimp. But anything with keratin in it will give them that light pink tint. Now I see some large footprints here in the dirt. White rhino are a great success story here in Africa. At one point they were very close to extinction. Now here on the right, right to the bottom of the truck, you're going to see those large white eggs. Very, very large eggs. Those are ostrich eggs. Zimbabwe, I see you at the junction. I suggest you go west. It will be worth it. Roger that Wilson. We'll head that way in just a bit. There's this giant rock structure up ahead. It's called the Kopi. And it's a great place to find lion because lion do tend to use that height. Oh, look at that. There's a couple ostrich there. That's a Bontabok over there. Bontaboks are very special because they're almost extinct in the wild. Now these white animals were coming up on. Uh, they're standing very, very still. They have those big, long, curly horns. Those are addicts. And addicts like the Bontabok that we see in the way back right there are almost extinct in the wild. Alright, Wilson, I think we're in. Uh oh. Wilson, come in. I'm seeing a smash gate here on the left. I'm gonna enter. Looks pretty suspicious, and it might be where the poachers enter the reserve. Let me know if I'm heading the right way. Over. The poachers are heading east. Keep going, and you drive them to my patrol. Over. Roger that, Wilson. We're heading that way now. Over, folks. Oh, no. Geysers. Hold on. We see that baby now, Wilson. Looks like we did get a little bit off of our scheduled adventure. I'm gonna have to drop you off just a couple weeks early at the warden's folks. And here in Harambe, we don't say goodbye. We say kwaharini, which means go well. So kwaharini, everyone.